I'm either gonna break down or I have to beat this guy's ass. Like those are the only two options in my head. I was raised by Bob freaking Wall. And I had so many people try to get me to comment on it and I just think I refuse to do it. I think that the thing that made it a hit more than anything else was that it had four really relatable um, protagonists at the mm -hmm. heart of it. And more importantly, it, it was about something that was really familiar to our target audience. That whole idea of leaving high school, going to college, summer break, and something goes wrong. And what would happen if that derailed your whole life? Oh my gosh. I think he's dead. We can't just leave him. We make a pact. Right here and now we take the Sar grave. And that was something I think that everybody could could sort of grasp onto. Oh, for sure. And and those protagonists ended up uh, you know, becoming really big stars. You had uh, Freddie Prince Jr., uh, Sarah Michelle Geller, J uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt. You know, I read an interview actually uh I want to get uh, your thoughts on this because Freddie Prince Jr. came out, I think, this year and was talking about how that you, you didn't really want him in the movie. Yeah. He wanted a different actor, a really good actor named Jeremy Sisto, who I know and I like and respect very, very much. And you wanted a guy named Jeremy Sisto in the film. This is, um, you know, I, I, all that came out from Freddie and I think partly because he was launching his own podcast. Mm -hmm. and wanted something to stir up some controversy and i had so many people try to get me to comment on it and i just think i, I refuse to do it because at the end of the day if that's what freddie believes that's what freddie believes i can't change that sure he was very direct in the fact that i don't want you in this movie however it's not true um you know, almost everything that he said there is a spin on reality. The studio, Mandalay, and one producer in particular, and most importantly, Kevin Williamson, wanted me for Ray because one of the major differences between Jeremy and I now, because I feel like I'm as good an actor as Jeremy is now. Back then, I was not. I I've, I'd seen Jeremy's work. He had more experience than me. He yeah. knew how to apply it more. So I could acknowledge that he was the superior actor at that moment in our careers. But he has this edge to him that I didn't have. And it makes you think he could be a bad dude. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And that kind of, I felt, gave away a lot in that last scene with Ray on the boat where he's like, come aboard, come inside. I felt like it, in hindsight, that it was, you know, too much of a, of a giveaway, whereas I was Sweet Boy Freddy, he would never hurt a fly, and that seemed to be a, a more attractive red herring to mm. uh, to Kevin and Stokely, the, the the producer I know who have my back. The truth is, and I've said this since the movie was released and during the release, I fought for Freddy to be in the movie. And the only reason he was in the movie is because I wanted him to be in the movie. So I don't know where he gets the thing about I didn't want him. And Jeremy Sisto, um, it's kind of a shame that Jeremy's been dragged into this. Um, Jeremy was one of those actors at that time, like Ryan Phillippe, who was a, a maybe big star. You know, there was a whole raft of those young male actors in Hollywood who had potential to be like the next Brad Pitt. Mm. And everyone talks like that when you're casting a movie like I know we did last summer. And so I had looked really hard for the person to be Ray, the character of Ray, which is a Freddy's, ultimately Freddy's character. And he came in and I really liked him a lot. Mm -hmm. The studio didn't. The studio just didn't think he was right. He wasn't sort of physical enough for them um, in the way that I think we cast Ryan at that point 
And Ryan, Ryan had a great body. He looked fantastic. You could put him in an old sack and he looked like a movie star, you know. And Freddie just looked more like a normal guy. Hey guys, if you want to look more like Ryan Phillippe than Freddie Prince Jr., then you need to start working out and eating good. And to help get you started, you can download the First Form app linked in the description below. You'll be set up with a live advisor on the other end who's going to help you with your diet, nutrition, and training. This app, by the way, you can track all your calories and also it has amazing training programs. Some of these I actually use myself, so I highly recommend it. And for a small fee, you will actually be set up with a real life advisor and you should take advantage of that because they're going to help you with your nutrition, your training, and like I said, help keep you accountable. So check it out. Linked in the description below. Don't wait till the new year, by the way, because everyone's going to wait till the new year to sign up for the gym and get in shape. You might as well start right now. A really great step is downloading that app and getting access to an actual real life qualified advisor. I was raised by Bob freaking Wall. That's the guy that trained <laughs> Bruce Lee when Bruce came to America. That's the man that taught me how to fight and not get bullied. <laughs> Oh, and we all know what happened to Bob Wall. Bruce Lee kicked his ass because Bruce Lee is ripped. And you guys can be ripped too if you download that first form app to help get you started. Mm. But he had something that I really liked, a sort of real reality to him. So I worked with him through four or five different auditions and screen tests um, to the point where he almost walked away from it because he was sick and tired of having to audition. Ryan came up to me and he said, screw that guy, man. Like, how many times did you audition for this movie? And I think I, I think it was like five or six times. Right. And so I, I go, five times. He goes, yeah. He goes, you earned it. He was like, you didn't get offered the role. You earned it. He was like, there were less people every single time you went. And then it was just you. Remember what booked you this role? And of course, I'm not saying to him, oh, people don't want you. I'm saying, oh, no, don't worry about it. We're going to get through this. Sure. And encourage you. Yeah. Work really hard. And we had a screen test, and this is the, the ridiculous part of the Jeremy Sisto story. Jeremy's a good actor, and he would have been good in the role, but he was so much more mature than everybody else that I was casting. And I wanted the cast to feel like they were the age. They were like high school, just going into college, not 27-year-old teenagers. Mm. And they were. So you know, Jennifer Love Hewitt was 18, I think, just turned. I think Freddie was the same age. They were really young. Mm -hmm. And Jen Sisto looked 25. And when he spoke, he had a deep baritone voice. Mm. And it was really weighty. We did a screen test, and Jeremy came along to the screen test opposite Freddie for that role. And I did that deliberately because I wanted the studio to go, okay, I get it. When you see everybody together, Jeremy's not part of that ensemble. He doesn't fit as well as Freddie fit. And that's nothing to do with talent. It's just sure. the balance of cast. And that's why Jeremy Sisto even came to be screen tested because I wanted him to so clearly be not what Freddie was. And having seen that screen test, the studio let me cast Freddie. And that's the truth of it. Now, why Freddie thinks otherwise, I can't answer to that. Um, but that's that's the actual reality. Yeah, that's cool. He And he might just be trying to get a lot of um, attention and controversy for his podcast. Uh, but I was like, nah, this guy just didn't want me in the movie. And then he said, I don't want you in the movie <laughs> basically you know one thing um one, one last thing i'll say because i read it in the article that he said that you left him psychotic notes with one of them saying don't leave your mouth open as you look stupid when you do that which is what my mom tells me by the but, way no, wait, you see again and this is um i mean it's quite funny because the way it's reported and the way it was reported here in the uk was if, if people don't know what a director does, a director gives actors notes. Now, that means that I, on the set, speak to them. That's a note, right? So if, I, if, I, if you do a take and I come to you and I say, it's a bit much, pull it back, you know, do, do this here a bit more, that's a note. It's not, I write you a note. 
<laughs> and that's how it came across. People thought I was writing him a note. And the way Freddie, of course, sold it was it was a psychotic note. The director would just give me psychotic notes, like, <laughs> don't leave your mouth open. You look stupid when you do that. That was the exact note, word for word. I'll oh. never forget it. And I had just, they all had this image of me writing like strange <laughs> notes and slipping it under his like trailer door or something. And the truth is, I did tell him to keep his mouth closed. Um, I, I, I don't think I ever said because, because you look stupid. Um, that's just not my word and it wouldn't be the reason for asking him to do that. If you watch the movie, there are plenty of times where Freddie is standing <laughs> with his mouth slightly open. And for any actor, I, I would say the note's a good note. <laughs> Don't stand with your mouth open. Yeah. There are plenty of times when that's fine. But in the final sequence of the film, where he's being the hero and coming to rescue Jennifer Love Hewitt, he had to be like the hero. And I didn't want him to be standing there looking a little bit like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I did 100% say to him, and in fact, I would be off camera sometimes, and I go, now, I, if he thinks that's psychotic, fair enough. Let's like say I'm not getting into a, a, a discussion or an argument with Freddie, but the note was a good note for the film. Oh, for sure. He's probably just sensitive. Like I had recently shot a film called Bloodstorm with Rene Perez and he gave me a bunch of notes, you know, like, and I'm not like, What's um, it? a sensitive guy, you know, he's like, Oh, well, don't do it like that. It doesn't look right. Or it looks dumb. It's like, okay, well, I want to look cool and I want to look good in the film. So tell me what to do. So I like these notes, you know, cause I don't get offended, <laughs> but, um, that's the job. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. Like you gotta trust the director, you know, because he wants the director wants to look good, so he's gonna make sure the actors look good, of course. Look, and the thing is, at the end of the day, you know, so none of it matters because Freddie's good in the film, mm -hmm. and the film worked, and Freddie went on and had, you know, a successful career. Oh, definitely. Uh, until he decided to sort of pull back from it. There. Um, so I, I have no, you know, like qualms about it, having given him the role. I mean, in hindsight, I'm not upset. In hindsight, yeah. I love because the movie launched my whole career, and I wouldn't have any of the things I have without that movie. I wouldn't have my wife, wouldn't right. have all the other <laughs> movies that I've done. I wouldn't have this podcast.